guys, we're here with Tyler Thompson Love of Fortune Auto Design. And as I stated before, he's going to be the man behind the screen getting the actual wide body kit from the um, fiction that we have on the rendering to actual reality. So before we dive into like the design for the car this year, Tyler, I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what it is Fortune Auto Design does and what you kind of bring to the market with what your company provides. So yeah, so basically what our goal as in, in the industry is, is basically there's a lot of people that just come up with renderings on the computers now and 3D stuff. And what we're trying to push more is provide the service to basically take a rendering or something that's in someone's imagination and just provide the service to bring it into fruition all the way from start to finish. So something that's done on the computer in like a 3D model in a sense typically isn't um, done in CAD, which is the computer aided design softwares and stuff like that, that engineers would typically use. Um, so then we would convert it to something that can be used by an engineer, can be used by our tooling and our, our machinery and, and things like that to actually make the changes needed to make everything function the way it should on you know a real life vehicle. Yeah, so going back to what you said about, um, you know, renderings, like there's a lot of really cool 3D renderings on Instagram and on Facebook and people see like these wild designs that, you know, a lot of really famous artists kind of have come up like Ash Thorpe and a couple other guys that are just make these really radical designs for cars. What I really wanted to stress to everyone watching today is, you know, it's one thing to be able to make these renderings, but it's also it takes a completely different skill set like yours to be able to bring it from concept to reality. So how is it that you guys do that? Like what what techniques do you use? Like what technologies do you use? Yeah, so if you if you take the DeLorean project, uh, you know, if we use that as an example, um, I mean, we have the concept renderings now and, you know, we've gone through the process now of, of putting that into something usable. And the way that we kind of transferred that was, you know, we had you uh, send us the 3D scans of the vehicle uh, we specified exactly what we needed as far as, you know, set the car up the way it was, put the proper wheels, put the proper setup the way you want the car to sit, and then just scan it that way. So then we use that 3D scan data to as a base for our CAD work. So basically we'll take the concept that was done typically on a, like a 3D game model or something like that, which isn't accurate to the point of, you know, a real vehicle. I mean, they try and use proper scaling and stuff, but you're always going to have even body lines and stuff aren't always in the places that they're supposed to be. Um, 3D models of DeLoreans are not even remotely close to what the actual car is. So basically yeah. we take that concept design and then place it on top of the scan data that you send us. And then we make the changes needed to actually, you know, make it fit the car properly and, and make it clear the wheels and clear while it's driving and set the proper heights. Um, and then once it's done on the computer, um, we used to use a lot of, we used to have a big CNC machine um, and CNC everything, you know, out of a tooling board or MDF, things like that. So we would be CNCing the positive, which is the plug, basically the shape of the fender, shape of whatever we're, we're machining. The biggest downside with the CNC stuff, you can, you can cut, huge pieces relatively quickly but the biggest downside where i'm starting to run into as anyway is like cost of the materials number one like tooling board and stuff like that it costs a fortune you know if i was the cnc that the full delorean kit it would probably cost eight to ten thousand just material alone yeah um, and half that material is getting wasted because you're just cutting it away um we've actually moved to doing uh, 3D printing instead, um, and we're basically 3D printing the actual pieces, and then that gives us the ability as well to test fit them on the vehicle, make any changes, things like that. So the even like the production body kits that we do, uh, the last I don't know probably three to four kits that we've started 3D printing, and that just gives us more flexibility and it reduces the initial cost as well. Like uh, you know a spool of PLA filament or something is only 20 bucks. You can get a lot, a lot more for a lot less cost, um, right. which is nice. Right. You know, 
And then if someone wanted to go to production, you then take those 3D printed parts and then you would and basically- we prep, Yeah, we prep them the same way. Yeah, yeah. we prep them the same way. We'd, we'd finish the piece off. So basically on the inside of the 3D printed piece, on the outside, it would, you know, shine like a, a, a perfect right. part. And then right. basically you would take a mold off that piece so that every part you pull out of that mold afterwards is a perfect a perfect replica of the part that you've you've tested right yeah and and, and with this technique you virtually can do it with anything exterior interior whatever anything a customer may need you can do it yeah and it's it's in a way it makes it a lot easier because especially if you have a complicated piece that has a lot of different surfaces a lot of different angle changes um when you're seeing seeing that you have to think of with a CNC, you're working on a flat plane. And if, if you want to make a mold of a part that has say a spoiler that has a top and a bottom surface that are both finished, well, you'd have to make a two piece mold. So basically the top would be one mold, the bottom would be another, and you'd split it down the center. With CNC, you have to add that split before you cut the piece, unless you have a five axis CNC, which can go all the way around the part, but it's still limited. With 3D printing, you can print that entire spoiler as you want it to be in real life and as you want it to show, and then you can finish it completely and then you can add your split wherever you want. So it gives you the ability to kind of rotate the part and, and do a little bit more like brainstorming as to how you would make the molds for that piece, right? So it just gives a little bit more flexibility as well. Right. You know, and if you, if you print a piece and it doesn't quite work out, I mean, it only takes a day to print another one and make changes, right? Whereas CNCing something, the same parts and stuff, it, it would probably take significantly longer. And yeah, it does take significantly longer because when we worked on the first iteration of this car back in 2021, when we debuted it at the Toyo Tires Tread Pass, you know, yeah. we went and we did that that first way. We we CNC cut, you know, molds out of a router table. You know, you did all the CAD work from where you're at in Canada, and then we were able to do some cutting down here in Miami. I'm pretty excited because there were some fitment issues that we had, you know, having to do things kind of the old school way, and now having this new school way of doing things. Um, we're able to make sure everything's perfect and make sure everything fits just the way it should. What are some design elements that you're bringing into uh, for 2023 with this project? And also what are some design characteristics that we're changing for version two? Um, I mean, the biggest thing is is getting, getting the fitment back to where it originally should have been. From the initial CAD design to the final pieces, I mean, you guys also, the biggest one was you guys CNC'd it out of like a, a very low density foam yeah. so when you were sanding it and prepping it you probably you lost a lot of the body lines and things like that that were initially in the CAD design the nice thing when you're working with a 3d printed piece like even just PLA or, or something a little bit more rigid is you can you can fill that part completely with like a skim coat of body filler I mean, what we do is we'll typically prime it or something like that to give us a nice surface to work off of. And then we'll go in and start, you know, filling anything and smoothing it out that way. Yeah. Um, because sanding on plastic, it just melts the plastic. So you want something to cover that. Yeah. Um, but when you're using a part like that, it's almost like when you're doing body work on a metal, pe on a, on a metal panel. As soon as you sand through the Bondo and hit the metal, you're not going any further than that because the sandpaper you know you'll you need a grinder to grind the steel away plastic and you know the the 3d printing works in a similar way where as soon as you fill it and sand it back as soon as you see the hint of that that color coming through from whatever color you printed the piece in that that's your stopping point so you're not losing the body lines like you would with a styrofoam or or, yeah. or something low density and that's another nice thing. Yeah. So we're going to bring those lines back. Uh, we're going to bring the fitment back. And just to preface before we go any further for anyone watching, um, you were doing a lot of the consulting and CAD work on your end. And then I was yeah. just kind of doing the manufacturing process on my end. So I'm super yeah. excited to work with you on the project this year because 
I just called you and said, just do everything because I don't want to have to go through all the design issues that I had before having to work with different vendors. I had, you know, guys that supposedly work with fiberglass and knew what they were doing with foam. And it was like a big, it was a big mess. So this time around, having you be able to do everything from start to finish is going to be able to really let, allow your, you know, your vision shine and be able to show, showcase what Fortune Auto Design can do as far as a body kit manufacturing company. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, you guys put a lot of hours into prepping that stuff before and then you pulled it off and then got the kit on the car. And I mean, it didn't look bad, but, ev you know, anyone who was involved in the project knew that some of the things got missed or yeah. weren't like the way that they should have been. And when you're doing a build and you're putting that much time into it, the last thing you want is to look at it when it's finished and go, well, this, this is only half baked. Like it's yeah. only half of what we actually wanted and it, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, so that's the nice thing about, you know, what, what I've kind of built here and, and kind of worked into it is like everything can get done, start to finish under one roof. So there's no, you're not dealing with multiple parties and trying to, you know, problem solve between three or four people. You don't have yeah. too many, you know, cooks in the kitchen, right? Like you, you got one person who, who knows the steps that are needed to be taken to get it from A to B, right? So yeah, um, I'm excited to kind of see a new version of this on the car and I'm excited to see it the way that we kind of envisioned it first time, right? Yeah. So on that note, what have we changed this year around for version two on the on the DeLorean body kit? Well, the wheels had spacers on them, so we brought the wheels in a bit um, because that was creating, I think it was creating some turning issues with um, with the car, right? So the Big wheels time. were scrubbing on the inside of the of Yeah, the, it was hitting, the wheels were hitting everything in the front. It was just way too yeah. aggressive and way too wide, so. Taking the front in by like two inches on each side. Um, yeah, and I guess the back was an inch or so, inch and a half. About that, yeah. Yeah, so I think the final specs for the back are about three and a half inches now, and then the front is two and a half, something like that, wider so, than. Yeah, I, I'm excited about this idea because it's going to be like a happy medium between like an ultra wide body, super aggressive setup, and like more of like a AMG Black Series, you know, where it's just yeah. kind of like a punched out flare. Yeah, I mean, you and I are kind of on the same page. Like we we like things when we change them to be like <clears throat> something that might come out of a factory that isn't you know at an 11 but it's at like a six or seven so it looks different just enough to get you know all the attention it needs but it, it doesn't look different to the point where it looks awkward right yeah and i think having having the wheels spaced out that far it looked like extremely, extremely aggressive to the point where, you know, you sat there and thought, well, there's no way that thing can drive down the street like that. And, and it, it could, didn't, <laughs> it didn't really drive down the street that good. So, <laughs> and, and that's the thing, that's the other part of like, again, going from concept to actually making it functional. Yeah. You could, you could widen the car by, you know, 10 feet in a concept rendering it doesn't mean that it's actually going to function that way another example is like body kit companies that are out there right now i mean there's companies out there that make wide bodies for mustangs and stuff and they'll the rear fender flares on on their mustang kits are like four or five inches wider than the factory ones and to get even a wheel specced out to fill that void is just absolutely ridiculous yeah yeah nice. like they're like a, a you know you'd get like a, a 18 or 19 by you know 13 with like a minus 70 offset and it's just like absolutely like it just doesn't make any sense at that point so how many um how many body kits do you guys currently produce uh currently in production we have I think we're about six or seven in production right now. And then we have another three or four in the works also. So hopefully by the end of the year, beginning of be going, being a beginning of the first quarter next year, we'll probably have about 10 to 12 kits out on the market. And then we're also more focusing on other composite items like carbon fiber stuff. Hoods are a big one that we're going to be focusing on uh, replacement fenders because we're, we're missing a lot of our customer base right now because not everybody wants to dump, you know, 10 to $15,000 into doing a full wide body conversion because 
by the time you get your suspension, get your wheels, get your kit, paint it, fit it, you know, do all the things you need to do, it's quite a bit of money, right? So uh, I, we offer a couple of carbon hoods now, but we're going to we're gonna be doing some more as, as well for some new cars too. So, um, so where can people find you? Uh, fortuneautodesign.com. Um, or you can look us up on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I mean, we're, we're all over. Um, we also do forged wheels too. So that's another thing that we're starting to get into more and starting to push. And, you know, the, the neat thing with our, our wheels and, and stuff like that is, is everything is customized. You, you can customize anything. Yeah. I'm super excited to be working with you on this car. I think, I think this year it's going to be really different because when we first debuted the car, it was you know, it was a learning curve and it was, we, we really learned a lot with the platform and this time around, I think it being more of like an OEM plus, plus the more aggressive, sharper alliance that you'll be doing with the Fender players that it's going to be pretty awesome to debut at, at SEMA this year. Um, it's going to be a home run. I appreciate you taking your time um, to talk with us for a little bit about what it is you do. Um, if you guys want to check them out, Tyler and the crew over at Fortune Auto Design, what's the website again? Uh, fortuneautodesign.com. Perfect. All right, well, thanks for uh, talking, and hopefully it's not too cold for you in Canada, buddy. <laughs> no, it's not cold here yet. <laughs> we won't get that for another month or so. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll talk to you later, and uh, let's get back to the shop. So I forgot to hit the right button on my camera, so I'm going to do my best, guys, to do some voiceover work at this part of the video. As you can see, we're removing the original system from the front of the DeLorean we're taking off the air compressor and we're going to be mounting it underneath the spare tire well what was originally spare tire well and I'm also trying to take the airlift management system which was below the actual carpet area before and we're going to build a bracket here where we are breaking it three or four times so it rotates around the tank now I'm mounting the tank back in its original location on the firewall and we're going to be putting the airlift management system right in front of the tank front and center and we're also going to be replacing all the lines with hard lines. So in order to do this I had to break a eighth inch piece of aluminum, go ahead and weld the corners up and we did a brush finish on it. So now you can't see the hardware, it mounts on the firewall behind the tank and goes ahead and puts it right in front of the flow tank right there on the firewall so that it has a really nice clean look now i think this is going to be a lot better when you pop the frunk the actual hood and you can see everything just looking right back at you so this really came out nice it was the first time i've ever mounted anything like this as far as the orientation of the air management system with the flow tank and i'm really happy with how it came out All right, so we got our flow tank installed and our airlift performance um, air manifold. This controls the air ride. Go ahead and just plug this guy in right there, boom. And that controls all of the actual um, air ride system in the car. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna situate all of our soft lines and we're going to hard line them into our carpeted floor here. So we're gonna have to punch four holes into it to be able to run some, some um, steel lines up and we're going to brush them actually no they're aluminum i'm sorry and we're going to brush them to make it look like the exterior of the car stainless so everything's brushed in the in the uh the front area we went ahead and made our new bracket here for our, our um, relays box for our fuel system our fans and all kinds of other stuff we're going to go ahead and get that mounted in before we close this up um and then we're also going to put the hood latch back on and then this front area is pretty much done we can move on to the actual shocks
so we got the old shocks out of the car. As you can see, we have our upper control arms just kind of dangling there. Everything should be fine with that. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this whole area where the old air ride was. And the reason why we're making space for um, the new air ride system. So I'll show you real quick what we had under the car. So this is a humongous bag that would be for like a big truck. And we have our KW shock there. And um, there's some billet collars that we use to screw it on. And um, we just kind of made it work. And this bag actually was so oversized for the, the front of the DeLorean that when you aired it up and down, it actually would like almost jump like it had hydraulics. So as you guys know from the video, we installed our airlift performance, uh, air management system, our flow tank, and we have to finish out the whole build with airlift performance builder series shocks. And we just got these in the mail. So what we have is we have the airlift performance builder series for the front and the rear. And I'll show you guys real quick what we're working with. So this is a direct application for a coilover replacement. So if you guys are running, you know, a coilover shock in your car, you want to run these bad boys. So this is going to drive a lot better with what we had, what we have in the car as far as the airlift management system. So now we're going to be able to actually adjust the ride height. We're going to be able to adjust the ride and the feel of the car as we go. And this actually has dampening adjustability too. So there's a little Allen screw that goes in here and you can adjust how stiff or how soft you want the shock. So when you go to ride height, this thing will actually work a lot better with the car as opposed to just your standard airbag setup with a shock. And it's kind of like flimsy and floppy. And uh, we still want to retain like that more, you know, that somewhat sports car feel. So for that reason, airlift is probably the best in the business as far as maintaining that sports car ride and still having the adjustability of your car. So that's why you see them on a lot of like exotics, a lot of imports and a lot of like high-end cars. And you can actually use them on trucks and um, different stuff like that as well. So we're going to go ahead and unbox the rest of this system and start fitting it into the DeLorean and see what we have to do to get this thing back on the ground. All right, so we got our Builder Series shocks all unboxed. We also got some really cool swag from Airlift. All the cars are gonna have the Airlift uh, license plate holders. We also have some lanyards here. Um, maybe I'll do a giveaway soon and just pick some random people in the comment section and send them off some swag. We also got this cool Airlift Performance banner. Look at this thing. Jeez, I don't know how big they think my shop is, but I'm gonna have to find somewhere for it. Maybe over there next to the AC. Nice little spot over on that corner. So what we have here are um, our fronts and our rears. And as you can see, from right in there, if you could see it, this whole thing is threaded. So you can see the range of adjustability in these bad boys. It's gonna be huge. We also have our stud collars up top, um, which is going to actually act as a, so this is gonna actually sandwich between the frame rail. So these two bushings would just sandwich between the frame rail of the DeLorean and it'll just mimic what the factory mounting point um, works as. So this guy gets threaded on. Inside of there, you already have your adjustable pin. So this gets threaded onto there and then you can adjust how hard or soft you want your suspension. So we'll be able to cross that bridge when we're actually like driving the car and testing out what's good and what's not as far as, far as the drivability goes. These right here are our control arms for the DeLorean. I already took liberty in cleaning them up and getting rid of all the schmutz that was off of them that was on them before and it was pretty stinking nasty so what will end up happening is this guy is going to actually go inside of here so we're gonna have to make some bushings to be able to center this thing in there um, probably some steel um, sleeves for the bolts and then we're gonna go right into our factory location um, this little notch here was originally made for the airline that came out of the um, original setup on the um the bags that were on there before and i'll show you guys real quick what we were working with so these are the kw bags um and you can see the line was coming out the bottom there of the bag which like i said before this thing is overkill and it's just way too big i mean this this bag alone look how huge it is like it's <laughs> it's massive it barely fit up inside of here and i had a lot of issues trying to get it to clear inside this control arm the new setup is gonna be far better. 
Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to reinforce our lower control arms first. I didn't have time to do that um, when I first made this system. Um, what I mean by that is, is we're gonna actually box the control arms in. So on the bottom side here, see how it's all open? This is super flimsy. So we'll end up taking a plate, going all the way across the bottom of this, and we'll probably scale up here so you can still service that ball joint. And then we're gonna close up these holes. These originally were some adjustment holes to try to get the car a little lower, but these things are super tiny. So it's gonna go in there like that and uh, give, us, give us very little issues, I think. This is gonna be a very painless install. The back end of the car is way, way is just as simple. So we have a stud up top, eyelid on the bottom, um, and I'll show you guys what we have in the back. The back is pretty straightforward. It's almost like an S14 Nissan. If you guys are familiar with Nissan stuff, you just have a single bolt there and a stud up there with a plate. It's very, very simple. These cars were very, very simple back in the day. They were not complicated. So the back is gonna need almost no modification at all, if any. So my main focus right now is getting the front end all put back together. We also yanked out the front sway bar slash TC rod. So this is an actual assist in the control arm. Um, on the DeLorean, you have your lower control arm that's here. And this rod comes across, acts as a sway bar, but also stops this wheel from shifting forward and backwards. Kind of a, a janky setup. You can see it on this car. That TC rod. Well, I call it a TC rod, but it's a lower control arm. It doubles as a sway bar. And they did that obviously to save money, to save manufacturing, um, to not have to do the complexity of a lower control arm to have a dual wishbone. But I have a feeling since the car was designed by Lotus in 1984 or 1983 rather, you know, before the car company went under, they probably had a lot of plans to upgrade, upgrade the suspension and do a lot of, um, a lot of upgrades there. So without further ado, I'm gonna start getting these lower control arms situated. We'll get them mocked up in the car. We're gonna get these all taped up so we don't scratch this nice anodizing, this beautiful red and black. This is our driver's side and as you can see it's a vast improvement over what we had and this is just I mean I could squeeze it you can see the movement so boxing in this lower section right here is going to give it so much strength this is not even 16 gauge metal guys this is like uh, 18 gauge it's super thin I won't beat around the bush DeLoreans um, they're junk <laughs> they were made really really crappy and there's a lot of shortcuts that were made in order to make this car happen in the short amount of time that they did make it happen um, it's a miracle that they got the cars done that they got the to the production um, but at the end of the day we have to make upgrades in order to kind of make up for the shortcomings of when the car was built in such a short period of time in my opinion they should have went tubular with the front just like they did with the rear but it is what it is so since we're going to be doing the airlift suspension and this thing is going to be articulating and using a lot of force in order to push the car up and down, reinforcing it like this and strengthening it is just going to give it so much more ability to have the confidence to be able to hit those switches, 
make the bags operate and not have to worry about anything bending or breaking. So we're going to go ahead and do the 16 gauge plate on the bottom of this one too. We're going to patch these uh, extra holes that aren't used and clean this up and then we're going to get these things painted and then we'll be able to start mocking up our system in the front and getting it to the point where we're able to actually bolt it in the car, seeing what bushings we have to make and what modifications we have to make in addition to what's already been done. So we got our control arms all sorted, went ahead and boxed these bad boys in. Um, I went and welded the leading edge of the rib, and then I added this piece in here to, to get rid of all of this, um, well, to fill in all of this uh, this gap that we had, because this was all like cut out and kind of like, it, we. I just had to make it work just for the show. And this sometimes is what happens with semen cars. They just get rushed and um, things happen. So in order to fix that, we went ahead and repurposed these guys. There are companies out there that sell these and make them out of billet and um, make them out of tubular, but for what we're doing, I'm pretty happy with this. This is gonna be plenty strong enough and it's gonna be able to um, allocate our airlift shocks no problem. So I went ahead and I installed our upper mount already. So this is actually a secured piece that just threads onto the Builder Series shock. They, like I said before, they have different um, receivers for different applications depending on what you guys are doing. So with the DeLorean, it's literally just a stud on top of the front and the rear of the chassis in order to hold the suspension in. Um, you can see on this car right here, on the original factory suspension, it's literally just washer, washer with a bushing on top and bottom with a bolt right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quick mock-up right now of the suspension. I have to figure out a way to get this to kind of hold up. But my biggest concern is being able to clear this original um, perch where the, sh the original spring went. So the spring went in here and there's a shock inside of it. Um, I went ahead and cleaned all this up that was originally cut out for the bigger bag. So we should have issues there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt the shock in first, swing this out and get our lower control arm in and then just kind of mock everything up, try to get it all to, uh, to fit in there. Once I can confirm that everything fits and everything clears, then we'll, we'll start painting and making everything look pretty and then do our final install and then work our way to the back of the car. Okay, now we got the shock in. Our slot worked out great down there. So you see we have a nice clearance for the shock inside our top um, Stationary peg is right where it needs to be. Our billet cup is not hitting anything. So this is full aired up. So this is like as high as it'll go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put our jack on the lower control arm. I'm gonna jack it up and see if our upper control arm is gonna go above this point. If it does, then I know it's completely aired out. But I won't know for sure until I get the wheels back on and put it actually on the ground. But I just wanna articulate the suspension, make sure nothing hits anything and make sure that this actually will air out where I want it before I go ahead and get everything painted and do a final install. So let's do that now. All right guys, we got our airlift suspension all installed in our DeLorean wide body version two. And as you can see, I just wanted to reiterate with you guys, we got our builder series shocks in the rear it's got the stud with the eyelet at the bottom. This was the, um, the application that we used for the back end of the DeLorean. For some cars that you guys are building at home, you might use a fork, you might use an eyelet at the top or a stud, but this bolted in just like it was from the factory. In the front of the car, we had to do a little bit more modifications, but nothing crazy. From our original setup that we had with the KWs and the giant airbags, we had to cut a bunch away on the upper shock mount. On the smaller airlift system, it clears the upper control arm with ease. Our stud on the top actually fits perfectly just like the way DeLorean had it. 
and we went ahead and did that reinforcements and all the modifications to the bottom control arm to make it a lot stronger and a lot sturdier to be able to handle the air ride suspension actually articulating up and down. And it's also going to be a lot better for performance and for cornering purposes. Up top, we went ahead and repositioned our airlift performance um, air management system as well as our flow tank. So everything's up top here and our air compressor is no longer inside the trunk but underneath the bottom side of the car. Now, next episode guys, we're gonna finish plumbing up the system. We're gonna activate it, we're gonna get it airing up and down, and we also have a ton of work to do to this car before it makes it to the big show that we're gonna be um, announcing very soon. All right guys, we'd also like to thank Tyler from Fortune Auto Design from, for coming on the episode and doing an interview with us, showing how to make a wide body kit from start to finish. If you guys have any questions about what Tyler does or what his company provides, we put a link in the description below. So that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.